Hello friends, I am Muhammad Babar. Uh, today we are diving into the concept of uh, solid principles in ASP.NET. So please hit subscribe to stay tuned for insightful discussions. So don't miss out. Uh, okay, uh, let's uh, start with the, the difference between the solid principles and the design patterns first. So what are the solid principles? So solid principles are set of uh, five design principles uh, that can help you create more maintainable, flexible and scalable software. So they are widely used in object oriented programming. So uh, solid principles focus on making individual classes and components more maintainable and adaptable. So these are uh, high level principles for structuring code and relationships between classes. So they're applicable at uh, the class and module level. So guidelines for designing maintainable and scalable softwares. So these are five uh, solid design principles when you are uh, designing a software. So these are single responsibility principle, open closed principle, uh, LISCOV uh, substitution principle, interface segregation principle and dependency uh, inversion principle. So we will discuss with examples uh, later on. So uh, when we comes to design patterns, so design pattern, it is generally reusable solution to a recurring problem in software design. So it re uh, represents a best practice or a template for solving a particular design problem in a specific context. So design pattern capture uh, um, expertise and uh, design principles uh, evolved by uh, experienced software developers over time. So design uh, patterns basically address broader architectural and design challenges. So design pattern concrete specific uh, solution to recurring uh, design problems. Okay, uh, design patterns you can use uh, say that reusable solution to common problem in software. So th uh, these are some uh, major design patterns. Uh, creational uh, design patterns. We have structural design patterns and we have a behavioral uh, design patterns. So these are basically a design pattern. It's a main uh, difference. So let's move towards the solid principles. So the first solid principle is the single responsibility principle. So uh, a class should uh, encapsulate only one uh, aspect of functionality or responsibility. Uh, so if a class has multiple responsibilities, it becomes more difficult to understand, maintain and uh, modify it. So uh, the principle emphasizes that a class should have only one reason to change. Uh, so if there is a more than one reason uh, for a class to change, so it violates uh, a single responsibility principle. So each class should be designed in a way that changes to one responsibility uh, do not affect other unrelated responsibilities. So uh, single responsibility uh, principle encourages the separation of concerns, uh, meaning that uh, different aspects of functionality uh, should be handled by different classes or modules. So uh, this separation improve uh, code organization readability and uh, you can say that maintain maintainability. Uh, so if uh, a class violates uh, SRP, consider refactoring it by extracting separate classes for each responsibility. So uh, let's uh, take an example. So consider a scenario where you have a class responsible for handling user authentication and user data retrieval. So let's take an example. You can see that in the first first example, uh, the user uh, handler class uh, will be uh, handling both user authentication and data retrieval. So uh, without adhering to the SRP, it violates the single responsibility principle because the class has multiple reasons to change. Okay, authentication, data retrieval and logging. So you can clearly uh, say, check that all the responsibilities authentication get and all we have added in the same class user handler. So when we apply the single responsibility principle, so we uh, have two separate classes. Okay, authentication handler uh, here and user data retrieval here. So each uh, with a single responsibility 
uh, okay so uh, uh, by using this uh, uh, basically uh, uh, separation allows us to make changes to authenticate uh, authenticate logic uh, without affecting the data retrieval so making the code base more flexible so this is the main concept of a single responsibility principle so now move to uh, second uh, solid principle it's a, an open uh, closed principle so this uh, the principle states that a class should be open for extension but closed for modification so we should be able to add new functionality uh, to a class without altering its existing code so uh, it these are basically two parts open for extension so what is open for extension you should be able to add new features or functionality to a module uh, without changing its existing code so that's uh, that is the open for extension and closed for modification means once a class or module uh, is completed and working correctly uh, its source code should not be modified uh, to add new functionality uh, instead the new functionality uh, should be uh, added through extension or by uh, creating uh, new classes that inherit for uh, from or compose with the existing one so let's consider an example uh, related to i have uh, prepared a uh, related example related to the to the shapes so we have a uh, shape class with a method area to calculate the area of different shapes so in the left side you can see that if we want to add a new shape here a triangle uh, currently we are uh, calculating the area of uh, square and circle so if we have a requirement of tri a triangle we would need to modify the area method uh, in the shape class so this clearly violates the ocp because modifying the shape class for each new shape contradicts the principle okay uh, of being open uh, for extension and closed for the modification so in the right side uh, uh, we have a, a now shape class is made abstract so we have made this uh, shape class abstract and the area method is declared as an abstract method so this uh, way each specific shape class square circle or uh, triangle must implement its own version of area method so this basically adheres to ocp we can introduce new shape without modifying the existing code now we can add more shapes triangle uh, circle square okay uh, rectangle so we can uh, uh, add uh, our own shapes by implementing the area of that shape by using this abstract class so this is the open and closed principle so when we comes to liskov substitution principle it's the third uh, solid principle so uh, it uh, what it says uh, subtypes basically drive classes or subclasses should behave uh, in such a way that they fulfill the expectations of the super type okay uh, super what is super type it's a base class or interface so uh, clients uh, using uh, objects of the super type uh, should not need to know which specific subtype they are working with okay so, uh, so list of substitution uh, basically subtypes should preserve the behavior of the uh, super type this means uh, that if a class has certain behaviors defined by its super type so those behaviors should be maintained in the su uh, subtype so uh, if a method is overridden in a subtype uh, the overridden method should be consistent with the contract established by the super type so uh, preconditions cannot be strengthened and post conditions cannot be weakened in the uh, subtype so lsp is closely related to the concept of design by contract which emphasizes the importance uh, of establishing clear and consistent contracts uh, between classes so let's consider a scenario uh, where you have a zoo management system uh, with different types of uh, birds initially uh, you have a class hierarchy for birds including a bird class and a specific penguin class so uh, in this example there is a bird class at left side you can see that uh, with the method fly 
and subclass penguin uh, so that attempts to uh, override the fly method the violation of lsp occurs because the penguin class is not truly substitutable so for its uh, superclass bird the program may break because the assumption that all birds can fly, uh, fly is violated here so you can see that okay uh, so when we comes to um, uh, less curve substitution here uh, right side so now an interface i flyable is introduced so both a bird and penguin now implement uh, this interface so uh, this ensures that any class implementing i flyable with uh, will have a fly method okay now the uh, list of substitution principle is not violated as both the birds uh, you can uh, see that and penguin can be used interchangeable uh, uh, wherever i flyable is expected so uh, you can uh, completely see that uh, simply we have implemented uh, we have created two uh, i flyable separate uh, interface and uh, its implementation in the bird class and uh, also in the penguin class so that is the less curve substitution now uh, the fourth principle is the interface uh, segregation principle okay uh, so isp promotes the idea of interface uh, cohesion uh, so uh, which means that each interface should have a single uh, well defined responsibility so interfaces should be specific to the needs of the cl uh, classes that implement them so uh, what isp uh, it, uh, it means that each client uh, should have its own specific interface okay containing uh, only the methods uh, it requires so uh, this reduces the impact of changes uh, on the clients and promotes better maintainability so it uh, discourages uh, forcing classes to implement methods uh, they don't use uh, when a class is required to implement unnecessary methods so it uh, violates uh, principle and can lead to code smell so by adhering uh, uh, to isp we ensure that uh, our classes remain focused on specific responsibilities and uh, that uh, clients are not burdened uh, with implementing methods uh, they don't need okay let's uh, talk uh, an example suppose we have an interface i worker with methods uh, work and eat uh, so without isp or uh, robot class is forced to implement eat me uh, method even though uh, it doesn't uh, make sense uh, for a robot 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 so uh, with isp we can create separate interfaces i workable and i eatable to avoid issues so let's uh, talk with uh, example so here is the example on the left side you can see that uh, without applying isp there is a single interface named i worker uh, and includes two methods uh, work and you can say that eat so uh, the intention is to represent any worker uh, whether it's manager or a, a robot so however this design leads to a, a problem uh, when it comes to implementing the interface in the robot class so when we uh, implement this so it comes a uh, it will display the uh, uh, problem so uh, by catering this uh, problem uh, on the right side we have a uh, 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 implementing the interface segregation so the code adheres to uh, the isp by creating two interfaces i workable and i eatable so uh, manager class implement both uh, providing specific methods the robot uh, class implements uh, only i workable avoiding unnecessary methods so this follows uh, isp ensuring classes uh, implement only words uh, needed for the uh, their functionality so you can see that the just uh, manager implements the both the uh, i workable and uh, i eatable interface so this is the interface aggregation now the last one is the dependency inversion principle so uh, it is called a, a dip so dip uh, often involves the concept of inversion of control where the control flow is inverted uh, compared to uh, traditional uh, procedural programming okay so high level modules should not depend on low level modules both uh, should depend on abstraction 
so abstractions uh, should not depend on details so details should depend on abstractions so this is the dip uh, dip is a basically a high level modules represent business logic and policies so uh, low level modules represent implementation details and services so high level uh, modules define interfaces or abstract classes uh, that represent the behavior uh, they expect from low level modules so low level modules implement the details required by high level modules and adhere to the abstract uh, abstractions defined so this principle promotes uh, the use of interfaces or abstract classes to create separation between high higher level uh, policy and uh, lower level implementation uh, details so let's uh, talk an example uh, consider a, basically uh, an example in the context of a notification system so uh, here is the basically a notification uh, in this example our notification uh, service depends on the abstraction uh, i messenger uh, message sender so and the low level module uh, email sender implements their uh, this abstraction so uh, when we talk about this uh, basically uh, notification service so uh, we have a basically uh, here we you can say that we have a i uh, message sender interface and we have implemented that interface in the email sender and we have a method of uh, send uh, implementation of send so uh, in uh, by using the dependency inversion we just imp uh, uh, basically implemented that service here in notification service so we basically inject that email sender uh, basically service uh, here by using its interface i messenger service so we have uh, what we have done here we have done a constructor injection here is the i message sender uh, we have a private property uh, 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 private uh, uh, variable and what what we done we have implemented that uh, basically uh, uh, we have injected that dependency of uh, i message sender so when we uh, inject the here uh, we can uh, call uh, the send uh, method implementation here in notify easily so this is basically uh, what this is the, the dependency inversion uh, principle this promotes flexibility testability and easier maintenance so this is the dependency inversion we just uh, make services uh, by using interfaces and we just inject that services in our uh, different classes or different other services so this is the dependency inversion and uh, thanks a lot guys for watching this video please hit uh, uh, subscribe button and like our video and also share uh, with friends uh, for more updates so thanks a lot guys thank you very much